Hey, hallo, grüezi. You know, I really came to love TPU as a printing material for flexible prototypes. It's fairly easy to print, it's super strong and it gives you flexibility, which no other material can do. But it has its issues. You see, there is actually two types of flexible material or rubbers. One is the absorber type. That's our classical TPU. But the other that we haven't touched on yet in 3D printing so much, that's the resilient type. And sometimes you just want this extra bit of bounce. But sometimes I don't look for a dampening rubber. I actually look for a bouncy one. So whenever I wanted to use TPU as a spring or like a really bouncy part, I was out of my depth. But that's why I'm super excited to actually show you something brand new that's just coming to market now. So this is PEBA or P-E-B-A. It's a new material and the company actually approached me and asked me if I wanted to test it because it's coming to market right now. I mean, PEBA is nothing super new. In the plastic industry, it's used a lot for, for example, shoes, running shoes to give you the bounce back. But in 3D printing, there were a few filaments out there, but most of them are discontinued because it's super hard to print. But let's start at the beginning. We all know and love TPU. TPU stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. You heard of polyurethane, you can have it as a foam, for example, in the packing of your uh, Amazon deliveries. There it's there to protect your packages. But it's also a rubber-like material with wild, wild properties. It's really good, it's rubber-like, but sometimes you hear people compare it to an uh, eraser instead of a rubber band. And that's actually one of the biggest downsides of TPU. It has many upsides, for example, chemical resilience, it's very abrasive resistance, but the bounce, more than disappointing. Tiva, in comparison to it, it's also chemically super resistant, it's also very abrasive resistant, but it gives you your energy back. It's super bouncy and about 20% lighter than TPU. So this company approached me, they're called Synbotron. They developed a new 3D printable PEBA. And the thing I was excited about is that they claimed it prints twice as fast as TPU. TPU. And as I know, TPU has some quality issues when printed fast. So I normally lower the printing speed. Like even on the Bamboo Lab material library, I lower the printing speed by about 30% just to make it more printable. On Piva, they claimed I can go full speed with like about 7.2. Uh, cubic millimeters per second uh, flow. So that's a really, really bold claim. And they also claim that is way more bouncy. I mean, you already saw that, but we have to quantify that. And they claim it has way more fatigue resistance. PEBER actually stands for polyether box amide. What it actually means, it's basically a blend of polyamide and polyester. And you're already familiar with those names. Those are two very, very strong materials. So they actually claim that this material has a five times higher layer bond than TPU, which is known for its layer bond capabilities. And it also resists fatigue. So one thing on TPU, which I didn't like, is when I built something and it has a spring part made from TPU under tension all the time, over time, my TPU just loses force and the pressing forces go down. So this material claims it can solve that because the creep, that's how it's called, they actually tell that the creep resistance on this material is way better. So disclaimer, Synbotron sponsored this video, but they gave us free hand with testing and everything. And what I actually did, I asked them for the data sets for all the tests they claim in their ongoing Kickstarter campaign. So I have the same STLs, the same models, and I will do the same tests. And let's compare if they're actually telling the truth or not. So there is actually three claims I'm really interested about and that I want to test myself. 
One is this. So I made this little weight and it has a marking here. So I drop it at the same exact height and we have our see-through tube. So I've printed here two cubes. They are the exact same SCL and the same setting when it comes to infill density and whatnot. So the claim that it's lighter, I mean, that's nothing that I can't check. I just weighed those. And yes, PEBA is about 20% lighter than TPU. So that's cool, for example, for drone protectors or stuff like that. So you just saw the B-roll of me putting this on a scale. And yeah, you're right. It's not 20%, it's actually 9%. Why I still believe their claim that it is 20% lighter is that this is a physical property of a material. This one has a specific weight of 1.0 grams per cubic centimeters. And this one has a specific weight of 1.2 grams per cubic centimeters. So that's just the physical given. Why those are different in our specimens now is that actually the slicing properties are a little bit different, of course. You have different flow rates, maybe the extrusion width is a little bit different. So this one just has less porosity in the print itself than this one, which makes it even stronger. But even though the scale showed only about 9%, the real weight difference is about 20%. If you achieve that with your printed material, that's a different story. But the physical properties are like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So that was PCB Way, the main sponsor of our channel here. And they actually informed me about something pretty awesome. So they already had an ongoing discount for purple soda mask on their PCBs. And they just informed me because of the massive success of that promotion, they actually extending the promotion for another month. So you can get purple soda mask for free now. I also want to remind you, they still have their contest for the mascot uh, 3D printing and design challenge going on. So you can still apply till January, 2026. And I want to see some of your designs there. So apply there and let us know if you want. Back to the video. But those are actually meant to test rebound. You might have seen it in the intro already. So what I will do, I will put this tube on. We have our scale, we have a camera set on high speed and I will drop it from the marking just on the part. And we will see how much energy this thing actually returns to my part. So we see how high it bounces and so we know the energy return of it. So they are very springy. It printed pretty well. I have to say my TPU part looks a little ugly. I used the new spool and the PEBA one actually looks quite good. So the claim on their printing speed is true. I have to say I had some trouble in the beginning on the first few prints with PEBA, especially with the black one, that my extruder would actually like kind of like clock up. It would like bend the, the thing and put it in. I printed these on the H2D and like I was bummed out because I thought yeah, I, there were PEBAs before, they printed super bad. So I thought another company like that. But then I actually read through their, their how to use thingy again. And I normally don't really read manuals. In this case, I should have. So I set the spool on an easy roll. So basically I had ball bearings below. So it really easily spins because otherwise it already pulls the string a little thinner on your extruder and pulls it out. And as soon as I did that, all the problems were gone. And I printed parts that were three days long and I didn't use a dry box. And PEBA actually like collected less moisture. There was no stringing. The print just went through fine. So let's move on with our first test, which is springiness or energy return. test was actually the one test I looked forward to it most because that's the one thing I was always missing of TPU. I printed something in a rubber-like material but I didn't really get rubber behavior so the energy return was kind of missing. 
So let's look into the conclusion of our experiment. So uh, we did actually two experiments. We showed you some footage of the bounce test of those plates, but we also compared the bounce height of our tennis balls. So just to exclude geometry, because here our, our bounce height actually varied a lot, about like 5% in between each test. Uh, I will show the graph somewhere and you can clearly see that on the plates itself, Piba actually returned about 2.5 times more energy into my weight, because that's what bounced it, than uh, TPU did. Does that mean TPU is a bad rubber-like material? Not really. TPU is meant to absorb energy. So I would personally use it, for example, when I need to stop something. For example, if you have an end stop on a machine and you really want to have a hard physical end stop, then you don't want your carriage to bounce back. That's not what I print that part for. I want the energy to be absorbed and distributed. So for this case, TPU is actually the correct material to use. And it's an awesome material in that. But if I want something to return energy, for example, if I would 3D print a running shoe, then I want my energy to be returned to me. I want to step on it and use that energy for my next step in a bouncy way and then Heber comes into play. So I think this experiment was more than conclusive and the rebound actually is really good. Oh, oh my balls just dropped. Let's go to the next test. I want to test the claim about creep resistance. So I printed these two cubes. Both of them are made from its material of 90A shore hardness. So this is a TPU 90 air a cube with about 8% infill. So it has a nice oomph to it, like a little springiness. And this one is the same exact model and it's also 90A and oh, you can already feel like how fast it bounces back. But I'm not testing this now. I don't want to know how fast something bounces back or how springy it is this time. This time it's about fatigue resistance. Now how it's officially called actually creep resistance. So every material creeps a little bit. I mean, we know that of everyday life as well. At the beginning, something made of rubber snaps and does like crazy. And then next time you open it, if you have it closed for like a few hours, it doesn't go up fully anymore. It goes up about like 80% or something like that. And TPU itself is really, really, really bad when it comes to creep. I have that in lots of my projects that I have something that should open fully again. And while I'm testing it, it's doing it. But then I leave it closed for like two days, three days, and then actually it just opens a little bit and it stays deformed. And they claim this is on, uh, on this material, this is way better. So what I have here is actually a massive chunk of aluminum. It's pretty heavy and we will use this one to test their claims. So in their claims, they actually had two different columns and weights on it and metal blocks. But the thing is, how should I prove to you that the one isn't painted aluminum and the other one is metal or whatever? So what we actually do is we will do one corner of the part with TPU and the other corner of their part, we will actually put PEBA under it. You saw that my test of fatigue resistance differed drastically from what Symbotron used to prove their fatigue testing. I explained already a little bit that I want to have one weight on both. And for me, it was about direct comparison. So this test showed you very visually what material would win in fatigue resistance or creep resistance. So when we put the weight on both cubes, they were holding up just fine, both of them. But over time, the TPU actually got weaker and weaker and weaker and got compressed more and more and more. Exactly that is what I meant with creep. It changes over time. It can't resist the force like indefinitely. And so it will creep lower and lower and you can really nicely see how the big weight is shifting towards the TPU side. I also printed out their test setup and did the same test as they did with three kilograms on each cube in those kind of holders. So fatigue wise, PIBA is superior as they claimed and I can confirm what they found out. So if you need something that holds force for a long time without changing its, um, its form factor, PIBA is superior to TPU. There's just no way around it. 
So now let's talk about another important topic, printability. So what I did and what Symbotron actually told me to do, I went on Maker World and downloaded this model of this little tennis ball I was throwing around all video. And they put in the material profile into, baked into those downloadable uh, 3MFs. You simply import them into uh, Bamboo Studio and you have all the presets there. By the way, I already mentioned it earlier, Symbotron has now actively their Kickstarter campaign online. So I really like that material and I actually plan to maybe use it for my work. I have to see if, I ha like if it has the correct properties for medical applications. But go over to their Kickstarter campaign and show them some love. You can even like back $1 or you can buy your spools by about 49% off, which I think is a great deal if you want to test that material yourself. So help them out bringing that material to market and making it cheap for everyone to afford it. So after you imported your material profile, I actually created a custom material so I can load it on my printer because I can slice it here, but on my printer, when I load a material, I still have to choose. So what I simply did is I clicked on edit here and then I clicked on this little save icon. I changed the name to whatever I want to do and I set it to user preset. So it's saved out of this project into user presets and then you can actually find it here under custom and you can set it and after you did that when you synchronize your material this will actually be sent to your machine and your machine will then be able to choose when you save your material it asks you to choose a material type and there you use tpu and after that, it's quite simple. Let's go to the machine. So when it comes to the printer itself, invest into one of those. That's basically just a spool holder that has some ball bearings. So it's really, really smoothly. Trust me, you really need it. Other than that, it's basically set up like TPU. Of course, you can't use it in your AMS system. And on the H2D, you actually have to pull it the same way as a TPU into the second opening. Other than that, you simply load it it's super easy and I personally combined it with a PLA as a support structure. It works flawlessly. So what's the conclusion of all my testing I did here? Pretty simple. PEBA or PEBA is an awesome material if you know how to use its properties. I really enjoyed printing with it. I had some trouble right at the beginning when I took it out of package first time. But then as I told you, as I figured out how to print it or actually looked up how to print it, it printed flawlessly. I printed for three days straight. I did not put it into a dry box, even though they suggested I should do and it printed flawlessly three days without even the slightest error. The printing quality actually, and I will show some footage, on PIBA is super nice. The quality of the layer lines, the, the quality of top surfaces is immaculate. And also getting rid of support structure is awesome because on TPU, uh, everything kind of sticks to it and printing with one nozzle and interchanging with flexible material doesn't work. So on the H2D, of course, you can print with a different material to it. But like the, the layer quality, for example, on the bottom side of the print, it, on PIBA, you, can, you have a hard time to actually find the surface of support structure. And what I personally like, and that's absolute personal preference, is the matte finish of PIBA. So if you look at those cube, the TPU one is very glossy and that's why you can see every little like blemish on the surface and Peeber has a super nice smooth flat and matte surface. I love this. It's fairly easy to print, it's easy to store and it has awesome properties and it gives super strong parts. So overall I really like this material. Only downside, it is a little bit expensive. I mean, you can now buy it with like 49% off, but later on 800 grams of this will cost you a pretty penny. But if you can use the properties, for example, in drone building, medical applications, shoe printing, then PIBA is an awesome material. And I love that this material is now added to the capabilities of everyday home printing machines. Keep that in mind. You can print that on a $400 machine and it's a high performance polymer. So is PEBA the new TPU killer? I don't think so. There are different materials for different purposes, but I think they will have a hard time to defend their monopoly and flexibility. Oh, oh. 
several. <laughs> that was like super badly. <laughs> 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 ah, fuck.